Many ancient sites found all over the world can no longer be explained away with currently attested academic opinion. Who they say built them, why, or when they were created. The most popular of these anomalies are the ancient monuments that can be found upon the Giza Plateau. Currently explained as having been built by our copper tool-wielding ancestors a mere 4,000 years ago, somehow successfully creating some of the most precisely built and indeed enormous ancient structures found on Earth, decidedly choosing to use granite blocks many tons in weight as their building material of choice. Ironically, although these sites are somehow exclaimed as having been built by the ancient Egyptians, any actual, literal explanation of how this was actually done has never been provided. Not only is academic opinion severely lacking any logical understandings as to the construction of these sites, they seemingly attempt to ignore and, in some cases, conceal additional controversial anomalies they simply cannot understand. Enormous stone megaliths are hidden all over Giza, and especially around the base of the Great Pyramids. And not only were these buildings adorned with incredibly hard granite, but also basalt, a similarly tough stone, and another which would be near impossible to have hewn with mere copper implements. Known as Giza's basalt floor, it is what many people now see as the smoking gun for evidence of advanced engineering having once been responsible for the construction of the site. Amongst the remaining fragments of the basalt floor is overwhelming evidence of ancient machinery, telltale precision signatures left on many stones, suggesting high technology was responsible for the shaping of Giza's enormous stones. Cut marks that could only have been left by high-speed disc cutting, striations, precise ridges and countless other curious features have been thankfully left upon these stones and these surviving tool marks could one day be used to actually identify the technology once used to build the site. We now feel that the evidence to suggest that the modern attested and mass-published theories regarding the origins of the Giza Plateau, its age, and indeed its creator's past capabilities, is currently incorrect and is now overwhelming and that it is only a matter of time before a revival of this past knowledge and indeed understandings again begins to flourish. We have long stated that there is considerable evidence to suggest that not only the Great Sphinx, but also its accompanying pyramids found dotting the plateau are far older than currently attested. We have shared the premise that many of the ancient hieroglyphs found all over Egypt are a mere 4,000 years old, while the pyramids and the Sphinx, both conveniently absent any of these same illustrative writings, are far older than this age. Why are there no hieroglyphs within the Great Pyramids? Additionally, why were there never any steps or stairs built into such awkward of structures? Is this a clue to the past function of the Great Pyramids? Were they never intended to be entered by humans? Not only is this absence of Egyptian art a compelling clue, but it also indicates that these structures were not constructed by the same people. If indeed they were constructed by the same people, why did they never document this task? There, in fact, exists an artifact within Giza. Once quoted as a must-see artifact by Zechariah Sitchin, this inconspicuous stone, known as the Inventory Stella, amazingly, is an authentic inventory left by King Khufu. It not only supports most of what we have now come to suspect regarding the plateau, a theory concluded from many different avenues of research, but it is a written description of the Egyptian civilization's activities upon the plateau, including what happened to the Sphinx, or more accurately, Anubis. We have come to suspect that many of the most popular alternative researchers who have spent their careers researching these specific subjects, have, just like academia, ignored patently evident materials surrounding the ancient past. Giza's inventory Stella, Zachariah Sitchin wrote in his book Journeys to the Mythical Past that the Stella was irrefutable proof, provided by Khufu himself, 
that he did not build the Great Pyramid, and that the Pyramid and Sphinx were already there in his time. Predictably, the Stella is simply ignored. However, some, like James H. Breasted, commendably included the inventory Stella in his official list of 4th Dynasty artifacts, stating that, regardless of opinion, that it, quote, bore all the marks of authenticity. Also, the French Egyptologist Gaston Maspero, whose most famous book, The Dawn of Civilization, stated that the Stella was indeed a factual record of the life and deeds of Khufu. Regarding the Sphinx, the text states that lightning once struck the head, destroying a large portion. Khufu then recarved the head into what we see today. He then built his temple in the vicinity of the House of the Sphinx and, interestingly, renovated the Great Pyramid. The Stella inventory not only confirms many things we have already come to suspect took place within Giza, but additionally, this mounting evidence is indicating to us that other suspiciously popular supposed in-depth investigations, often accompanied by expensive trips to said sites, are deliberately inaccurate works of controlled opposition. Regardless of other opinions regarding this matter, we will continue to present what we always have on this channel. Truth and honest opinions. As always, thanks for watching. When asked what are the largest, heaviest, and indeed the once most difficult stones to ever have been cut, transported to, and precisely placed within the great structures of the Giza Plateau, we would have previously stated that the granite ceiling blocks found within the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid were the largest known, with some of these stones weighing as much as 100 tons. However, it turns out that there exist many other stones upon this mysteriously created plateau, which far exceed the pyramid's inner megaliths. Unsurprisingly, these discoveries are rarely shared academically, or indeed to the many people who pay to visit the Giza Plateau each year. The Valley Temple is but one example of these other, less mentioned, marvelously enormous stones, eight of which are still present within the structure's ruin the largest of which still being roughly 3 by 3 by 6 meters in size. Furthermore, the same similarly sized stones can also be found within the Kefren Pyramid Causeway Temple. The structure is also rarely discussed or shared by Egyptologists or archaeologists alike. It seems that academics who fear a loss of funding from particular bodies tend to merely ignore that which they are confronted with which they simply cannot explain. Again, the same enigmatic megalithic blocks can be found in the causeway temple of the Miserinus Pyramid. One finds the same highly eroded, thus extremely ancient stones. It seems that these huge stones seemingly litter the Giza complex, and amazingly, they are successfully ignored merely due to their controversy. Yet, the largest to be found anywhere upon this man-made plateau are to be found hidden in plain sight. Overlooked for many millennia, the still remaining foundation stones, upon which much of the east side of the Kefren Pyramid once stood, were not lifted into place, but were indeed transported to this location and precisely placed into position. These stones are so massive and so perfectly dropped into the surrounding landscape that thousands of people have walked right over them every year without ever realizing what they were standing on. Although the true depth and thus complete scale of the block is currently unknown, if it is of a cubic shape, it would appear to be roughly three-quarters the weight of the pregnant woman of Baalbek. She weighs around 1,001 tons, which would make our foundation stone anywhere from 500 to 750 tons in weight. Clearly, a controversial yet incredible discovery, one which takes our understandings of the sheer undertaking that was Giza, are still at an early stage. Nonetheless, such discoveries move us one step closer towards finally understanding just who could have built the Great Pyramid Complex of Egypt. There are many places upon our planet 
that were once home to the many ancient cultures that we are yet to unravel. A large number of these places clearly showing the erosion of an enormous antiquity, with some even rendered unrecognizable, slowly slipping back into the geological features in which they were once placed amongst. However, some of these civilizations were seemingly aware of this fact of time, deciding to create the largest stone structures to have ever graced the earth. These monuments, predictably outlasting the many smaller sites, which have slowly been reclaimed by nature. These surviving sites can still reveal to us some astonishing things regarding our past, and indeed, our future. One begins to wonder whether these monument size was a planned strategy for their apparent longevity, or whether their size served another, perhaps more profound purpose. Nearly all of the unexplained or seemingly impossible ruins which dot every continent on Earth are almost always attributed to a civilization incapable of such feats and often attributed to the same mundane purpose for creation, with rock-cut structures, this almost always being a tomb. Tumulus Hill being a good example of this. Also known as the Hill of Casta, this enormous feature is not a natural formation. Amazingly, this hill, long thought to have been a natural feature, is actually a massive man-made structure. Additionally, the original stone structure, once buried beneath millennia of strata, is actually a 500-meter-long, precisely constructed stone boundary, forming an almost perfect circle, encapsulating what has indeed been explained away as a tomb. Many pyramidal structures all over Earth create compelling alignments and although these mysterious structures, mounds, and monuments have been explained away as mere burial chambers, the truth is, we just don't know. And the question remains, what were these enormous triangular structures used for? Guarded by sphinxes, most probably Anubis, amazingly, the size of Giza's pyramids are relative to the distance of each of Orion's stars. Is this a mere coincidence? Along with our recent research into clues left regarding an ark, be it Noah's Ark or the Ark of the Covenant, a theory we touched upon previously has begun to present some rather compelling leads connecting these structures, the alignments, star constellations, and a possible purpose for the pyramids. If one pursues past postulations regarding stargates, gateways to an apparent godly realm, etc., etc., you begin to notice links between many ancient beliefs, ancient structures, ancient covenants, and possibly interstellar travel. The double hexagram, now largely recognized as the Star of David, is also the shape realized when connecting many ancient sites upon our Earth. Is this shape also an illustration of an arc? connecting or visually overlapping two pyramids into one point? What was the Ark of the Covenant? Did it power the pyramids? Did it once reside within the Great Pyramids? Many questions left still remain unanswered, although we finally may be on our way to answering them. In Mystery History's opinion, the ancient ruins found upon the Plateau of Giza are some of, if not the most, heavily debated, heavily guarded, and most academically protected ancient site on Earth. Yet it remains one of the most talked about, mysterious, intriguing, ancient stonework of them all. Many people are now aware of the anomalies, which were once tightly controlled secrets, surrounding the exterior features of the build, and, more importantly, the achievements that these feats once were. These inexplicable factors, the size of the megalithic exoskeleton, the vastly different ages of the casing stones, are now thought by many as the defining motive for a cover-up regarding the pyramid's true age and original purpose. Media blackouts, counterintelligence, 
and many other outlandish conspiracies now rife among the research of the site, from giants to UFOs. The ideas and theories people have put forward for their function, or indeed, what could be hidden in voids constantly discovered yet to be penetrated, these hidden rooms, along with their ancient entrances, remain a complete enigma, even in recent years, as advances in penetrative radar become a reality and accessible to self-funded individuals and research teams, more and more voids, unexplained heat anomalies, and even air shafts not known of before continue to be discovered within these enormous mystifying structures. Yet, as mentioned, the subculture, many genuine yet misguided in their investigative method, yet also many funded individuals involved in many other hard-to-deny subjects has successfully swamped the field with dis and or misinformation, creating opinionated followings with a successfully corrupted impartiality, deceptively manipulated into becoming said misinformation's advocates, rather than whence they came, an open mind, a skill for discussion, and an unbiased critical approach to subjects whose true nature are actively being protected. The predictably far fewer articles, books, and other logical, critical, impartial to all but fact, unwavering competent research done by many capable individuals, although adrift within an ocean of fallacy, shines much light upon some highly compelling yet albeit highly controversial features of the Plateau of Giza, features which may one day lead us to ultimately unlocking the pyramid secrets and allowing us to finally understand what these structures' past functions truly were, not only in detail, but perhaps in an attempt of replication. During our own research, we have found some interesting similarities between Giza and Bosnia, among other lesser-known pyramid structures. And this curious yet continually reoccurring feature is now being more frequently discovered all over the world. The Great Pyramid of Bosnia, for example, a site discovered by Samir Osmanagic, has an ingenious river, which, after three years of research, was confirmed by him and his team to have had an artificial current. The reason for this is currently unknown, but it seems water was a significant factor in the past function of these ancient structures. Water is a curious thing, and in many situations, acts just like that of electricity. It runs in currents and travels through tubes like electric through cables. Yet no one seems to know what electricity is. We hypothesize that these water features are of tremendous significance when it comes to understanding the true function of these incredible structures. But I digress. The plateau has always intrigued me. Although buried by a desert sand, the solid sandstone below is of an unimaginable size and seemingly level, over 40 feet deep in some places, yet no one truly understands its origins. Indeed, structures as large as the pyramids would need impressive foundations. But the plateau, it seems, is far too large and, if man-made, bafflingly sparse of any ruins, structures which one would have presumed would have been the reason for its enormous construction. There is, however, another hypothesis. A legend that told of a lost labyrinth, a secret underground lair as big as a town, a secret underground structure so large and thus so easy to get lost within, it became known as the labyrinth. Long spoke of but always dismissed as mythological, this due to a lack of any substantial evidence for its existence. That is, until a few years ago, when a groundbreaking rediscovery was made, yet unfortunately it seems, this groundbreaking event was somehow masterfully stifled not shared by mainstream media, funded institutions with their armory of literature and magazines alike. Thus, it merely becomes an observational exercise in yet another display of the influence our currently controlling institutions have over public opinion, preventing an underground city of gigantic proportions buried beneath Giza, never successfully achieving public notoriety. The sand of Harara was scanned by a Belgian-Egyptian expedition team in 2008, 
in an effort to research something known as the Quarry Theory, suggested by Petri in 1889, following his finding of a great artificial stone surface measuring 304 meters by 244 meters. Petri interpreted the enormous artificial stone plateau as the foundation of the labyrinth, concluding that the building itself, although long believed to have been totally demolished in the Ptolemaic period, had in fact survived and lay hidden for millennia. The surveys proved its foundation remained unpenetrated and still laid undiscovered beneath the sandstone, never lost, the possibility of the results being that of the roof of the labyrinth, all but proven true. The following is an excerpt from the DIG's official report. Quote, Underneath this upper zone, below the artificial stone surface, appears, in spite of the turbid effect of the groundwater, at a depth of 8 to 12 meters, a grid structure of gigantic size, made of a very highly resistant material like granite stone. This proves the presence of a colossal archaeological feature, which has to be reconsidered as the roof of the still existing labyrinth." End quote. Are the legends true? Does the labyrinth of Giza still lay hidden, unexplored beneath the sands of Egypt? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Countless talented, valiant souls spanning all throughout modern history have been publicly lambasted for their troubles. Not only are such readings and results regularly scoffed at, and any subsequent finding, all stemming from their honest admittance that their data showed evidence of inhabitation with quote, underestimated prehistoric dates. Many of these artifacts and ruins, claimed as being a mere few centuries old, we have, due to extensive research into similarities and differentiations at many of these sites, managed to locate signature stonework within the structure's outer walls, clearly submerged and perfectly preserved for untold millennia. Indicative of many inexplicable sites around the world, which some even claim are upwards of 300 million years old. The Great Pyramids, along with their Great Sphinx, we feel, with the substantial evidence we have previously put forward, is a treasure trove of examples, for when one becomes aware of Giza's anomalies at least, can expose those fed a lie, the impossibilities within said conspiracy theory, and begin to realize more and more unexplainable anomalies, helping others to realize just how impossibly difficult these structures would have been to create. A feat when considered by many, especially those with a good idea for the sheer size of this place, find the reality that the plateau was possibly man-made very hard to conceive, subsequently still concealing many secrets, which we feel is the purpose of the plateau being created in the first place. And although it seemingly spans far from the feet of the gigantic pyramidic trio and their accompanying sphinx, we feel this was deliberate and not naturally formed. According to computer engines, the stresses within the Great Pyramid itself were perfectly calculated. However, the main strut or lintel in the Grand Gallery is cracked, indicating pulley systems or other heavy technology was still atop the structure once built. This extra weight has been hypothesized was an oversight. Furthermore, any attempts to reconstruct these incredible buildings by using computer systems to simulate supposed slave attempts we still, to this day, cannot find a valid working technique. However, if one ups the size of the being, their strength, and indeed their intellect, not only were the pyramids within reach, but also many other baffling megalithic areas, such as polygonal masonry, all could be explained. Additionally, along with this hypothesis, many giant-sized sarcophagi have been found throughout Giza, yet we feel covered up dismissed as clearly what they are tombs, in favor of explaining them away as storage cases. Who built ancient Egypt? When did they build it? How did they build it? Questions which need to be answered. Questions which we find highly compelling. The Pyramid of Menkura may be the smallest of the three main pyramids of Giza, 
But some find this site to be one of the most intriguing to be found upon the Giza Plateau. Not only does the pyramid still possess casing stones of a polygonal style, nearly identical to that found throughout ancient Peru, and indeed now discovered globally, but it also possesses gigantic ancient megalithic blocks, exposed for all to see. These impossibly huge blocks of stone are clearly of a tremendous age, leading up to a once immaculately carved inner chamber. On the 28th of July, 1837, Howard Weiss rediscovered the upper antechamber of the pyramid. Within, the remains of a wooden anthropoid coffin inscribed with Menkura's name was found. This tomb did indeed contain human bones. However, this is now considered to be a substitute coffin. Radiocarbon dating on the bones also claim to have determined them to be less than 2,000 years old, which, according to certain researchers, suggests an all-too-common bungled handling of remains from another site. Furthermore, along with polygonal masonry, an inner chamber and three tiny accompanying pyramids, known as G3A, G3B, G3C, the age of this pyramid has also not been hypothesized or narrowed down to any specific era within the ancient Egyptian empire, making it an obscurity, and also, predictably, a lesser-known site within academic study and mainstream reporting. Who built the pyramid? Are the megaliths within the outer temple walls the same as those of the exoskeletons of the larger ancient Great Pyramids? An ancient anomaly which has been exposed mostly upon the east wing of Cheops by the removal of outer casing stones which we have in the past reported on, along with their clearly much younger age. In AD 1196, Al-Aziz Uthman, Saladin's son and the Sultan of Egypt, attempted to demolish the pyramids, starting with Menkura. However, and rather predictably, eight months in, they found that it was nearly impossible to destroy. Not only could they only remove one or two stones each day, when a stone fell, it would bury itself in the sand, requiring extraordinary efforts to free it. Wedges were used to split the stones into several pieces. Despite their efforts, workmen were only able to damage the pyramid to the extent of leaving a large vertical gash at its northern face. It is undoubtedly a highly intriguing pyramid. We have often postulated as to the precise age of the great monuments of Giza, undoubtedly the most astonishing structures left by the ancient world. There are many questions which persist regarding this ancient site. Who built these extraordinary buildings? Why did they build them? And of course, when was this unimaginably enormous task undertaken? Interestingly, there exists an enigmatic statue, which it seems, although predictably little shared by academia, actually predates this astonishing time within Earth's history. Quoted as possibly one of the rarest finds of its kind, According to Dr. Clarence Epstein, Senior Director of Urban and Cultural Affairs at Concordia University, where this remarkable item is housed. Not only can no one date the object, but there also exists a language etched into its form which is yet to be deciphered. As Dr. Epstein acknowledges, no expert, among the countless he has personally consulted over the past decade, can identify the sculpture's age, artistic tradition, or indeed recognize and decipher the ancient language found etched into its base. Dr. Epstein believes the statue is of a pre-dynastic age. It was originally taken from Alexandria by the Diniacopolis family. It was then shipped with 20 crates of antiquities from Egypt and the Middle East to Canada, where it still resides. However, its whereabouts prior to the shipment are unknown. The statue is of two nude subjects standing 67 centimeters high, one male and the other presumed female. This figure is also noted as possibly holding a child. They are depicted in a sitting position, with noticeable elongated skulls. Now known as the starving of Sakura, this due to the figure's emaciated frames, 
Just what could this statue represent, or indeed be trying to tell us? How old could it possibly be? And most interestingly of all, what could the enigmatic writing upon its base actually mean? As more research is undertaken, it is only a matter of time before we know its true identity once and for all.